Welcome back. Hello. Thank you very much for joining me once again as we continue with our sessions on logistics execution with warehouse management. Today we're going to be looking at a new topic, which is transportation planning. A very interesting topic and a, a key component of logistics execution. Now, today we're just going to quickly look at an overview of transportation planning as a whole. Uh, we'll go on to look at some shipment types. We'll look at shipment stages, and then we'll finalize by taking a look at the shipment document. Transportation planning is a very critical component of our logistics execution module, and it's uh, basically responsible for planning uh, shipments, both inbound and outbound. It deals with three categories of uh, deliveries. Uh, that's uh, namely goods issues uh, that use outbound deliveries, goods receipts that also uh, use inbound deliveries, and stock transport orders with deliveries. Now, I'll emphasize that in these three categories, delivery documents have to be involved. If you uh, have been following our earlier sessions, you'll, uh, you'll remember that it's possible to have a goods receipt without an inbound delivery or a goods issue without an outbound delivery. So transportation planning, because it's responsible for planning inbound and outbound shipments, relies on the existence of an inbound delivery or an outbound delivery when we're dealing with goods receipts or goods issues. And uh, the third, the third uh, category is uh, stock transport orders with deliveries. Now this is basically when we have stock within an organization moving probably from one storage facility, one warehouse to another. Uh, perhaps uh, one warehouse has run out of a certain type of stock and yet another warehouse has a lot of that kind of stock, still has that stock in, uh, in storage. And so a stock transport order with the delivery would facilitate the movement of that stock from one facility to another. So we find that transportation planning is going to mainly focus on these three categories uh, of deliveries. When we use transportation planning uh, for our deliveries, we'll, we'll, what happens is that an extra step or an extra document is going to be added to our delivery document flow or our delivery process flow. Uh, that's of course the shipping document. And uh, the, the shipment document contains planning and execution data that relates to the transportation activity that is occurring. And it gives rise to, it can give rise to a number of different outputs in terms of print output or uh, output that can be sent to your customers or other stakeholders that may be interested, such as, uh, for example, delivery notes, uh, shipping orders, bills of lading, different types of documents can uh, result from the shipment document. So when we're using transportation planning, as we went through in our previous session, uh, a sales order can kick off the process and a delivery document, outbound delivery document can be created with reference to a sales order. And now the shipment document is going to come after the outbound delivery. An outbound delivery will be assigned to a shipment document. And therefore, the shipment document then becomes another layer in our delivery process flow or our document flow. In the shipment document, or as we pro perform our transportation planning, a big part of that is going to be what we call shipment cost calculation and settlement. It's a very big part of our transportation planning. And what it does is it basically allows for costs to be calculated and to facilitate for their settlement in accounting. A number of costs can arise as an organization deals with transportation logistics. Uh, it could be allowances, certain levies and border fees that may arise as a result of the transportation process. And these costs can be projected, they can be forecasted, and the system is going to allow these to be passed on to accounting for settlement. And so shipment cost documents will then arise. So that's a very powerful tool that comes with our transportation planning, allowing us to 
cater for the costs that arise in our transportation planning procedures. When we're using transportation planning in logistics execution, what we call the shipment type plays a very critical role as well. And now the shipment type basically represents a set of controls, a set of uh, settings that determine key shipping parameters. For example, the, ship, the, the shipment type can affect the mode of transport to be used, uh, the direction, uh, that is whether the delivery is inbound or outbound, and it can also affect uh, various copy control uh, parameters, such as what exactly to copy from the outbound delivery into the shipment document, for example. Uh, that's just a number of things that the shipment type controls. And there are basically three types of shipments, three shipment types that we'll get in our standard system. The first one is what is called an individual shipment. Now, as the name suggests, an individual shipment typically has one or more deliveries within it. It has a single point of departure and one destination. It also uses a single mode of transport. A single mode of transport is used to fulfill the entire delivery from start to end when we're using individual shipment. The second shipment type would be a collective shipment. Now, with the collective shipment, similar to the individual shipment, we have one or more deliveries. However, we have several departures. We can have several departures as well as several destinations. But we only have one mode of transportation just like with the individual shipment. So the difference between the individual shipment and the collective shipment is that with the collective shipment, you can have several departure zones, uh, departure points, and several destinations. Unlike with the individual shipment, where only one departure point and one destination is supported. Otherwise, they both share the characteristic of having to use one mode of transportation to fulfill the delivery. The third shipment type would be the transportation chain. And now the transportation chain is different from the, the first two in that it involves a multiple, uh, it involves multiple modes of transportation. Multiple modes of transportation can be involved in the fulfillment of that particular delivery. Now, there's a little more to the transportation chain. It's a little more complicated than the individual shipment or the collective shipment as shipment types. The transportation chain involves, because it involves multiple modes of transportation or uh, several points of departure and several destinations, there is a bit of a prerequisite. Let's look at an example to get this a little bit clear. Let's say we have a warehouse and cargo is being shipped from this warehouse to a final destination. But it's not that simple. The cargo must first be removed from the warehouse and loaded onto a truck and transported from the warehouse via road to a port. And at this port, the cargo is going to be offloaded from the truck and loaded onto a ship, which is going to cross the sea and get to another port across the sea, offload the cargo from the ship and load it onto a train, transport that cargo via rail to the final destination. And so in this scenario, we have three modes of transportation, namely road, sea, and rail. And now, what typically happens in a transportation planning process is that three separate shipment documents are going to have to be created for this particular delivery because it has three modes of uh, transportation in use. And so three separate shipment documents are going to be created. And so what happens is the system needs a way of identifying that a shipment is not going to stand alone. The shipment document that was created when the goods initially left the warehouse is not the only document, shipment document that is going to relate to this delivery. But a subsequent document is going to be created to account for the journey that the cargo uh, or, or the, the, the part of the journey 
that the cargo was transported by ship. And a third shipment document is going to be created to account for the part of the journey where the cargo was transported by rail. And so to get the system to know that these shipment documents relate to one another, what we, we have to assign what we call leg types to each shipment, the different types of, of, of legs. And in order to use the transportation, uh, the transportation chain, at least three shipment types have to be flagged either as a preliminary leg, a subsequent leg, or a main leg. And once this is done, the system will know that a particular shipment that is created is going to be linked to other shipments. And so this makes for a very smooth representation of the entire delivery process because the shipment documents that are created to represent the different stages of the delivery, both uh, via road, via the sea, and via rail, are going to be linked. Those shipment documents are all going to be linked and when we look at the document flow, it will be easy to associate the shipment documents with the actual deliveries that were being handled via that shipment. Shipment stages are also an important concept that we have to look at. And basically, we, look, we, we, we discover that shipments can either be divided manually or automatically. And in our standard SAP system, we have three stages uh, that can be assigned to a shipment and these stages are basically firstly we have legs secondly we have load transfer points and lastly we have border crossing points uh, legs basically represent a connection or a bridge between uh, the start and the end point connection or a bridge between the departure and the destination point load transfer points which is our second uh, shipment stage, it basically represents a point during the shipment where the means of transportation is switched. When we switch from truck to ship, that's a load transfer point where cargo is moved from one means of transportation to another. And the last shipment stage is uh, the uh, border, cross border crossing points. These basically uh, stand for when goods cross uh, national boundaries. And so shipment stages can be used uh, in, in various various ways. For example, we could assign a border crossing point to a particular customer. We know that whenever we're making a delivery to this particular customer, there's going to be A, B, C border crossing points. And we can also associate a border crossing point uh, with a shipment cost. For example, we may know that whenever we're delivering goods to this customer, we're going to have to cross this national border and a duty or a tax is going to be levied of such and such percent. And so we use these shipment stages to basically enrich our transportation planning process. And now finally, we're going to take a look at the shipment document which is the key document, the document that is generated when we perform our transportation planning. And it basically summarizes deliveries according to specific criteria. When you're creating a shipment, you're able to sift through the pending outbound deliveries, deliveries that are relevant for transportation planning. You're able to sift through them using different criteria, such as uh, outbound deliveries per shipping point, outbound deliveries per departure, or destination point and various other criteria and so when you're creating your shipment document you're able to select these outbound deliveries based on criteria that you can carefully determine by yourself and you can either create a single shipment document or you can opt to go the collective collective processing route which is also possible with shipment documents uh, and basically shipment documents are generated uh, when we're doing collective processing uh, using selection variants and selection variants will basically contain a group of selection criteria that are used to filter deliveries and these collective uh, shipment documents can be processed in the background they don't have to be done necessarily in the foreground step by step 
but they can easily be run in the background. Now within a shipment document, uh, the transportation processing is controlled by various statuses that basically fall uh, within two extremes um, that's basically planned and completed. So basically what we have in this scenario in the shipment document is a planned date and an actual completion date. The document is used to monitor the progress of the transportation planning process and various steps can be confirmed in the shipment document. For example, as a vehicle arrives for loading, it can be flagged as checked in. And when it's flagged as checked in, the date and time for this uh, check-in is automatically captured when you flag it as checked in. And before the truck actually arrives, you have the opportunity to set a planned checked in time, a check-in time and date. And so when the vehicle actually checks in, you have the ability to compare the planned time and the actual time that the vehicle checked in, which gives you very powerful monitoring capabilities when you're using the shipment document. Well, that just about sums up the basics of transportation planning. And in our next session, we're going to be taking a look at warehouse activity monitoring, a powerful tool that uh, helps users plan, control, and optimize warehouse activities. Thank you very much for joining me here, and I hope you'll be able to join me in this next session, which I believe is a very important part of our logistics execution module. Have a nice one, and see you again soon.